pretty excited about this brand new wallet that is coming into the Cardano ecosystem. It's nice to have another official wallet that is created by one of the main entities of the Cardano blockchain, in this case, IOG or Input Output Global. So let's go through a quick starter guide on how to set up Lace Wallet and start using it. Yeah, yeah, I gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get it hype. Crypto is what we like. But this is not investment or financial advice. Gotta do your research, cause it's risky. We know it is. This show is educational and it's informative. Crypto's the future, really. It ain't no Now, first off, if you haven't liked and subscribed, please, on the way through here, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and you'll get a lot more Cardano related content from me. Now, this here is the Lace website. You can get to it at lace.io it will give you a good overview of the wallet and what you should be expecting but to get it installed click on the add browser button in the top right hand corner there and this will take you to the chrome extension store now it's important to note that this will only work on chrome browsers so it won't work on firefox but google chrome and brave browser certainly will click on add and that will install it into the browser and allow you to start using it now, when you first open up the wallet, you have a few options where you can start off from. You can restore an existing wallet that you may have, connect your hardware wallet or create a brand new wallet. Now, it's important to note if you're restoring a wallet, it will only accept a 24 word seed phrase. If you're using a wallet with a 15 word seed phrase, it won't work. So make sure you are using the right one and restore from there. If you don't, Maybe it's better if you create a brand new one at this case. Now, it's also probably really important to note that the Lace Wallet is a single address wallet. That is, it only uses one address as opposed to these multi-address wallets where you get multiple different addresses that all go to the same wallet. So it's really important to note that if you're restoring a wallet and you're missing some assets, you need to transfer them all into the single address that you're given on the wallet itself. So in this case, let's create a brand new wallet. So here I'll click on the create button, go through these terms of use. There's a qu there's quite a bit here. Click on accept next. Now here it does ask for shared analytic data. It's all anonymous, but in this case, I'm just gonna click skip. I'll give my wallet a name and then we need to add in a sending password. Try and make that as strong as possible and you will need to remember this password. Now next is the seed phrase that you need to record and remember in case you ever need to restore your wallet again. Now it's really important to note that this seed phrase is really, really important. And if anyone has access to the seed phrase, they can restore it on their own machine and to access all of the funds that are in there. Now, as a part of the process, it will ask you to uh, write in all of those seed phrases in your recovery process here so that it knows that you've written this down and stored it securely. Now, there are lots of tips in regards to storing your seed phrase. It is really important that you keep this offline, not on a computer and stored somewhere that it won't uh, disappear, burn or accidentally be thrown out with the trash. I highly recommend uh, writing it on a piece of metal. I've got these little sheets of metal here, which I uh, inscribe all of my uh, seed phrases on. This is a, a really cheap piece of aluminum that you can get from a hardware store. And then I have an engraver that I purchased for $20 off eBay and I can inscribe the seed phrases on there and then store them in a safe location. Now that uh, is so that I can sure it doesn't get exposed to sunlight and fade. Ants don't eat it. It won't burn in a fire or have less of a chance of burning and melting in a fire. And I can get to it really quickly and easily. So that's a really good way of storing your seed phrases. And there's a lots of videos and tips and tutorials on how to safely secure those seed phrases on the channel. Just check out the playlist below. Now, if you filled in all those seed phrases properly, it will let you proceed to the next step. Otherwise, you get a little prompt there saying that you haven't done it correctly. Check the spelling and check the order of all those uh, words in the seed phrase. So let's now go to the wallet and have a look at what it all looks like. So at a glance, the wallet is very simple. You have all your tokens here. You have an area for your NFTs, an area here for all of the activity on the wallet itself and a staking portal where you can stake your wallet to a various, uh, the various Cardano stake pools in the ecosystem. So I'm going to transfer a little bit of assets over to my wallet here and start using it. 
So moving the assets over was very quick and easy. All I had to do is click on that receive, copy that address and use my other wallet to send assets to that particular address. Now I can see the NFTs have appeared in my wallet here. I've got a couple of music NFTs and this uh, copper seed safe one here animating nicely. I can see the activity, the transactions that came through and now I have some ADA in the wallet. I can actually stake my wallet in the Cardano ecosystem now and I'll show you exactly how to do that. So here I can see all the state pools that are currently in the Cardano ecosystem. There are a lot there, but let me type in my own state pool here, Ada Oz, and there it is there. So I'll click on that one. You can see a little bit of information statistics about the pool. We can see the amount of active stake, saturation, and the amount of delegates there. But here we can now click on stake on this pool and it will give you the prompts of what you need to do next. Now there is a staking deposit that will register your wallet. You do get that back if you ever deregister your wallet from staking. There's also the small transaction fee here and I absolutely love it how they give you the translation into the US dollar value. So I'll click on next, type in my password, confirm that and that's it. My wallet is now staked in the Cardano ecosystem. I now have self custody staking of my ADA assets on there. Now here in this staking dashboard, you can actually see all of the uh, staking rewards that you'll get over time. And you can look at that at any point and see how much of a return you're getting for staking your ADA. Now that you have your wallet all set up, you can always use your wallet in its mini mode. And this is the version that you would most likely use when you're connected to a dApp. Now, if I click on the lace icon within my browser extensions, I get this little mini version of the wallet itself where I can browse quickly browse through my NFTs, look at the recent transactions and also see where I'm staked at as well. So it's a really quick glance overview of everything within the wallet itself. And I really love those little features where we can now have the mini version and also the larger extensive version where you'll see more settings, more configurations and everything else that you may need within your wallet. Now this is the first release version 1.0 on mainnet and I'm excited to see more of these really cool features that they're promising to come out on the wallet very very soon. If you really enjoyed this content please consider giving me that thumbs up, click subscribe, click on that notification bell and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get it hype. Crypto is what we like. But this is not investment or financial advice. Gotta do your research, cause it's risky. We know it is. This show is educational and it's informative. Crypto's the future, really, it ain't no debate.